Uh, Netanyahu has just concluded his speech to the US uh, joint session of Congress, having claimed that anti-Israel protesters around the world are on the side of evil, that he will not allow the war in Gaza to be ended without the complete defeat of Hamas, and that Israel would have to retain control of Gaza for a while after this to stop another terror group developing. He also firmly denied that Israel is targeting civilians or making any move to prevent aid getting to them. Um, Andrew Rossendell, I, I mean, this is now being obviously going on since October. Uh, the, the main question that I think Sam was really asking there is, why, why can't they separate innocent people who are being slaughtered in Gaza from Hamas terrorists? I think it's been going on a lot longer than last October. This is an historic matter, which... Frankly, we're all deeply frustrated about what's been going on for so long. Every attempt to try and find a peaceful solution has been rejected. Time and time again, over the centuries, decades, these things have happened and nothing has solved any of it. The reality is that Iran is funding Hamas. Until that ends and until Hamas completely end all violence, Israel's not going to give up. They're going to carry on the war. So if you want an end to it, there has to be an end to the original violence, which, as we saw on the 7th of October, comes from Hamas. The Jewish people and the Arabic people have always lived in that part of the world. They need to come together and live in peace and accept each other. Until that happens, conflict will continue. Maybe, but what about the fact that Israel maintains it is targeting Hamas terrorists, and yet we see on our television screens whole communities, whole areas being decimated. There doesn't look to be a lot of targeting. No, and nobody condones that. We're all deeply upset by what we're seeing uh, and the, the deaths of many innocent people. That is not something that any of us want to see. But the reality is that Israel believes that they as a country, as a nation, are under threat. They believe that they would be obliterated, uh, that uh, Israel believes that uh, those who are fighting against Israel want to destroy Israel. And so it is for them a matter of survival. And that's why this can never be resolved until there is a, a proper peace agreement between both sides. And it has been tried, but it's been rejected many, many times. Christina McEnany. I think it's, it's uh, wrong. I think the um, Netanyahu's lied when he says that they're not cutting off aid. He's lying when he says that they don't stop water. Independent agencies are saying that this is a that this, the countries and that Palestine's in the verge of of uh, famine. Gaza is in the verge of famine. Uh, Forty thousand people dead uh, in in this conflict in in Gaza. Um, and I don't think it's good enough to just say until Hamas stop, then Israel will continue to do what they do. Um, Israel has the right to defend itself, quite quite rightly, uh, but this has not been targeted at all. And yet, you, we see when you look at some of the, uh, you know, I've seen photographs and and some videos of journalists who've been attacked. And, you know, a drone comes over and completely destroys their car. So they ca it seems that they do have the capacity to target, but they're deliberately choosing not to target. And they are wiping out whole communities, whole areas. And uh, But I agree, Israel has the right to live in peace and so have the Palestinians and so have the Gazans. And that's just not happening. And there has to be united international effort going into saying enough is enough. And I, I think the problem we have is that Netanyahu... Uh, you know, there's a lot of opposition to Netanyahu in Israel. There's many people in Israel who are demonstrating against their government and would like to see something happening. The problem you've got is he's aligned himself with the very, very far right in Israel who believe the Palestinians have no right to exist and should not have any land at all. And to say things like um, Israel has to continue to keep control of Gaza even when this ends, well, I would say that will guarantee you that there will be another resurgence of violence. There will be another group waiting to take the place of Hamas, even if they could end up getting rid of Hamas. I think there needs to be a proper united international effort to say enough is enough and actually get uh, people to sit down and 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 actually find a way forward. And are you happy with the Labour Party's position on this conflict? I think the Labour Party, what they put into the manifesto is better than it had been before. I think they've made some mistakes in some of the things that they've said on this. 
Uh, personally, I would like them to recognise the state of Palestine. I think it would at least be able to start a dialogue then on an international level saying we have two countries here that are both re- are both considered to be independent states. Let's start talking about how we find peace between them and how do we, we allow them to live in a t- two-state solution. So, no, I'm not 100% happy with it. I would like them to move further. I, I'm, I was actually in Palestine about seven weeks ago uh, as part of an international trade union delegation and... Uh, uh, we went in Gaza, but in, in the West Bank, mm. uh, and actually seeing the extent to which Israel controls the entire country, of uh, the entire region of the West Bank. The, they control the borders, they control the roads, they control the, the flow of water, they control the money. Uh, you can actually see why uh, there is this resistance building up. And the trade unionists that I spoke to are incredibly worried about this. They want peace. They don't want to see their younger, the young people being radicalised and turning to violence as a way out of the troubles. So they're they're trying to work internationally with other unions to say what pressure can okay. we put in our countries to try and find a two state solution. Ellie Chance. Yes, I mean, it, it's an absolutely tragic situation. It does go back a very long time, as Andrew said. But, you know, if you're talking about looking back at the original violence, you know, that isn't the Hamas attacks, horrific as they were on October the 7th, and absolutely condemn them. There is no excuse whatsoever for that sort of violence. But it's totally clear that the Israeli response has been completely disproportionate. And also there's really clear evidence now but what would of war be crimes. Disproportionate? You know, what we're looking at is 40,000 dead in in Gaza and counting. And the large majority of them clearly civilians. It's collective punishment, essentially. And in fact, the UK is essentially complicit because there's evidence, of course, of British arms being used by the Israeli forces. So we do need a ceasefire. We need both parties to come to the table. And there are things that the UK government could do that they are not yet doing that would put more pressure on. There needs to be real pressure on Netanyahu to come to the table because there's really good evidence that it's actually suiting him politically to not actually come to agree a ceasefire. So we need the UK government to step up to that. I I said to David Lammy, the Foreign Secretary in the House on Friday, we should stop arms, British arms exports to Israel right now. We do need, but, as Christina said, recognition I mean, that, of the Palestinian just a gesture, state, isn't it? Because we don't actually, I and mean, the UK government doesn't sell arms to Israel. I mean, there are arms that come from this country that go to Israel, and they have to be licensed. That's absolutely right. But I mean, it's a very very small amount. We're That's still small complicit. come the other way. We, we are still complicit and in in the context in which there is very good evidence of war crimes, in the context in which, you know, not just in fact in Gaza, but, you know, Christina talked about the West Bank, you know, the increasing levels of settler violence there. I think we need to use all levers that we can as a government to put pressure on both parties and frankly, particularly the Israeli government to reach a ceasefire deal because the more violence there is, the more entrenched it becomes. Violence is not going to solve this to incredibly have two long-standing people conflict. around a table, don't you? And Hamas have made clear they have no interest in coming to a ceasefire. I think both parties have made clear they've very little interest no, in coming to a ceasefire. And, you know, then it is incumbent on the international community to do everything possible to bring them to a ceasefire. Ultimately, only those parties can come there. But when there remain levers that we could take as the British government, then I think we really should be using them. And that could include things like targeted sanctions as well. Don't you think that actually... This is all about the American government. That's why Netanyahu is in Washington today, because he wants to shore up support for Israel there, which has been dissipating a little. And so he wants to make sure that um, whoever is president, and he's got a meeting with Trump, he will have a meeting with Kamala Harris later this week, I gather. He, He wants to make sure that in the longer term, America remains committed to supporting Israel. Clearly, that's why he's in America now. And and we've seen that there's, you know, there's a significant chunk of not just civilians and citizens, but also lawmakers who are really quite unhappy about that. Uh, but that's not to say that Britain were, shouldn't do their, what I mean, you it won't, can. You won't have seen this, but I was actually really surprised that the whole of the Congress, Senate and House of Representatives, they were on their feet cheering Netanyahu. There didn't seem to be anybody who was not... Um, and I was slightly surprised by that because I, I thought that the mood was changing. My understanding is there were many dozens of lawmakers who didn't take their seats 
because okay. it, in, you know in protest. So it's not surprising to me that those well, there who were any, there, there in weren't the any empty were ones. It didn't seem anyway. Um, Jerry Scott, uh, going back to Sam's question, why can't we separate the innocent people being slaughtered in Gaza from Hamas? What's your view on that? Well, look, I'm not going to pretend to be a expert on the history of the conflict, but what I do know is the kind of political context in which we're operating in in this country. And I think that more and more we have seen this new government try and make that separation. I think if you look at the position, for example, that Keir Starmer was in in November, for example, when he had front bench resignations over this issue, I think, um, you know, as Christina was saying, there has been movement. It's not quite where some in the party would like it to be yet. I was speaking to an MP just earlier today um, who is not happy with where the party is on the issue, would like to see more done, but isn't one of those who um, has rebelled yet. And of course, the rebellions that we saw last night, actually, a lot of those names are the people who have been speaking up about this. So there is arguably now a dearth of voices um, in the parliamentary party on the issue. I think there has been movement. I think, you know, there were suggestions in the manifesto suggesting the recognition of a Palestinian state. Um, But I think basically pressure will continue to mount if we keep seeing these devastating scenes. That is not going to get easier for the Prime Minister, for the Foreign Secretary to address. Um, There might be fewer voices in his party making these points now, but I don't think they're going to go away. And of course, you know, when we look at those election results, places like John Ashworth losing his seat, this was clearly an issue that was on the ballot paper for a lot of voters. It's why we've seen so many independents get in. It's only going to keep coming back up.